Welcome to the show all about the greatest ironies history edition. On today's episode, we talk about one of the most exceptional ironies, the story of King Mithridates VI of Pontus. We begin in 120 BC in what was northern Turkey. Mithridates VI, also called Jupiter, was born in 120 to 63 BC and ruled over the Pontus Empire during the time of the ancient Roman Empire. In fact, they were mostly at odds throughout his reign. Pontus spanned an area of land and influence across northern and eventually all of Turkey. As a teenager, Mithridates' father, Mithridates V, was killed by poison. Hello there. Let me jump in and fill in some of the blanks for you lovely folks. His father's death shaped the young man profoundly. This is an important point to remember, as this drove the young chap to worry about being poisoned by his closest friends and even family. When he came of age, he even fought against his brother for control of the kingdom. A little tussle amongst boys, as it were. Once a ruler gained power, it was commonplace for them to have a taste tester. You know, someone who would try their food before they ate it to ensure it wasn't poisoned. A common method to assassinate someone you didn't like at the time was through the use of various poisons. Unfortunately, when it was poison, the taste tester would just go ahead and die. And there were usually peasants of sorts, so, you know, God save the king and all that. However, Mithridates was different. So remember that part I said was important? You should. It was just a few seconds ago. Well... So great was his fear of dying by poison as his father did, Mithridates, instead of hiring a taste tester who would check his food, he started taking small amounts of poison each day to grow a tolerance to it. In fact, he was one of the first to acclimatize himself to the various poisons by slowly ingesting a little bit every day, and eventually he developed immunity. For almost 50 years, he ruled Pontus. He got into several wars to try to expand his empire, particularly with the Romans on three separate occasions, and after suffering several defeats at the end of his last battle, he tried to escape instead of capitulating to the Romans. As you can see, the Romans were quite peeved with Mithridates and the whole Pontus Empire by that point, and he knew they would stop at nothing to capture him and parade him on the streets of Rome like some sort of trophy. So, as he fled his last battle, he tried to commit suicide. First, he gave poison to his wives and children, who drank it and then died shortly after. You know, women and children first, as they say. He swallowed the remaining poison and waited for death's embrace. He waited and waited, and continued to wait, and after a couple of hours, he realized nothing was happening. Well, it turns out, old Mithridates was actually immune to the poison's effects. Now, there are two parts to the story historians disagree on. The first was that after hours of not dying from the poison, he asked his loyal bodyguard to end his life, so he used his sword to kill him by stabbing him in the chest. The other was that he tried to poison himself, and after that didn't work, an angry mob who was revolting against his wartime taxation. Ironically, taxes that were raised so that he could fight the Romans rushed in and all stabbed him to death. In both cases, a hilarious irony to the story. As a final note to our little tale, through all his experimenting with herbs and poisons, he did invent a cure-all antidote called Mithridite, which was even used as an attempt to cure the Black Plague.